Hi, and welcome to the BSIG World Blog. I'm Andy White, and we are here once again with Andreas Kontvik. Um, Andreas was our very first blogger at the launch of the BSIG World Blog a year ago. So we're very happy to have him back with us today. Okay, Andreas, so last year you blogged about cultural differences. There was a bit with teaching with technology, as, sure. as well as business English as a lingua franca. Uh -huh. and, and before that, in November, you presented for the first time at, right. at BSIC. Yeah. Um, what did you present about? I talked about uh, the differences in directness, in how um, people communicate, how people negotiate um, people coming from Germany or coming from the UK going into the same negotiation, and then the different strategies that they use to, to say things directly or indirectly, um, in other words, uh, hedging. Yeah, I, I got to see that presentation. It was fabulous. Um, can you share with our viewers um, where that led to? Well, yeah, that was amazing um, how things just escalated from there. After the, no, I think it was at the, um, the conference I met um, Murdo McPhail from Cor Nelson, mm -hmm. uh, who asked me if I would be willing to to create some um, online downloadable worksheets, which I then did um, for during most of last year, and they're all up on the on the Cor Nelson website now. Mm -hmm. And I also got into presenting in a big way. the The workshop that I did at BSIG was repeated in quite a few German towns for different teaching organizations. For example, in Frankfurt, it went down really well. In Cologne, in Munich, uh, where else did I go? Switzerland. Yeah. Yeah. So, so BSA just opened so many doors for me. And so it's something you could really recommend for people to, to do to Absolutely. present it. Good, good. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a good thing as well. Do um, it. What have you been working on since then? Um, the worksheets that I mentioned, mm -hmm. they led to a, a book contract that I have now that takes off uh, in February. Great, uh, congratulations. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll be writing my first teaching book. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's a book to, to a teacher's guide for a B2 uh, business book. Mm -hmm. um, what else? I'm presenting um, around Europe, in, in Sweden, in Spain, Switzerland next week. And are so, you presenting on the same thing, or do you have new new topics? No, I have new things as well. Mm -hmm. I, I talk about um, multiple intelligences and also using creativity, not just in in um, for younger learners, but also for for business Great. students. Um, can you expand on that a little bit? How do you how do you use multiple intelligences or tap into creativity in the business English classroom? Right, so I heard something a little while ago that uh, Ken Robinson said, uh, he said that uh, schools kill creativity, mm. uh, which I found a, a real shame. Um, and it also led me to think about how that then affects um, business students, because students who maybe learn lang a language in school uh, will then believe that how they learn that language is how you you should learn a language. Okay. If you then go into a classroom and you try um, different ideas, maybe more creative ideas, the students might not take you as seriously um, as they would if you were to go in with, I don't know, a gap fill exercise or something like that and a, a, a very heavy grammar introduction. Okay, and how do you approach that issue then? So I try to tell my students that things have moved on, mm -hmm. uh, that we don't teach in the same way that we used to. We find that other things work and are a lot more effective okay. than maybe how they learned back in school. And how do students take that then? Um, different reactions. Sometimes um, they're, they're open to it. Um, they're very happy to do new things, they don't want to learn the way they, they learnt in school, and then others, um, I find, they, they maybe think, who is this guy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I always have that, here? regardless of what I'm doing. Um, okay, so 
that's some of what what you talk to them about. What are some of the practical activities? Okay, I um, I work a lot with games. Mm -hmm. um, I work with competition. I find competition students, whoever they are, if they're um, fifteen year old kids or if they're um, bank managers, even. Uh, in the class together, they, they always want to have fun, they always want to, to play games. If you can then um, add that vocab learning uh, element to that, that's fantastic. Uh, it helps them remember things next time uh, they'll associate the, these words, these sentences, these chunks or whatever they have uh, to that context. Okay, and um, with the with the creative side of things, how do you tap into a student's creativity? Um, that's where the um, multiple intelligences come in. Okay. Uh, I find with people who work maybe with numbers every day, they, they want to do things that are kind of logical. Maybe they have a code or something, they have to crack the code, they have to find patterns in the language. Mm -hmm. um, other people are more visual. And I think it's really important to identify um, how they learn, uh, what works for them, and then to, to tap into that. Okay. Um, do you do anything with the musical intelligence or kinesthetic intelligence, or do you find All that them. that's too far? All of them. All no, of them. Nothing's too far. <laughs> nothing's too far. Okay. Yeah, I think there's a, a lot to say for that. Um, the, almost the wackier it is, the more memorable it is. True. And, and that's, that's what we're aiming for, isn't it? True, true. And that's actually one question that I have for, for the people watching this, for everybody watching this now. How do you tackle that? How do you um, go into the classroom and convince your students that what you're actually doing, if you're working with mm -hmm. musical intelligences or, or you're singing a song or something, how do you convince your, your business students that this is actually going to help them? Okay. Yeah, super. I think that's a great question. Uh, any other questions for the viewers? Also, um, just what they do in the classroom. What, what, what do you guys do in the classroom to kind of appeal more to a creative side? Okay. Uh, how do you make things, animate things in your classroom? All right. Super great questions. So thanks a lot, Andreas, from me and from the BSIG World blog. I'm looking forward to checking in again with you next year, maybe having you back for the blog um, to see what <laughs> wild and wonderful things you're up to. Is that all right? Absolutely. All Anytime, right. Andy. Thank okay. you. Great. Thanks a lot. Bye. Okay. Bye.